Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Six new reports into the Rotherham child sexual exploitation scandal have blamed, blamed widespread systemic failure rather than any specific individuals, saying there was now little they could do to take action against former staff. The Council commissioned the reviews after the J report revealed how at least 1,400 children were left at risk of sexual abuse. Many were raped, trafficked and exploited over a period of 16 years by gangs of men, mostly of Pakistani heritage. But with no one now held to account, Rotherham MP Sarah Champion called it a wasted opportunity to allow the town to move forward. Diana Magne reports. There has been so much talking done now in Rotherham. Whistleblowers who weren't heard, victims who've testified of the horrendous abuse they suffered, the authors of public inquiries, the J Report and the Casey Review, detailing what went wrong. But there is a piece in this jigsaw, accountability for senior managers at the council, that's still missing. It just seems to me that whenever it comes to the professional side of it, uh, people are just getting away with it, you know, they'll retire, or there seems to be some kind of loophole. So I'd like to welcome everybody here this afternoon. Today's reports add to the catalogue of failings on the part of the council, but did not single out any individuals for blame. We looked hard at these. Often, we found evidence that something had happened, but we could find no evidential basis to suggest that there was a planned or orchestrated cover-up. Put plainly, it was more cock-up than conspiracy. The report authors say it was hampered by the fact that 27 individuals failed to respond or refused to be interviewed, including a number of senior officers. Amongst them were former council leader Roger Stone, who resigned in the wake of the J report, his successor Paul Lakin, and former head of children's services Sean Wright, who went on to become the area police and crime commissioner. Wright is already under investigation by the police watchdog. In 2014, he told the Home Affairs Select Committee that he knew nothing about child sexual abuse in Rotherham when he was head of child services there. The IPCC are now looking into whether that was true. For decades, the sexual abuse of children went on in Rotherham unchecked. Gangs of men, the majority of whom were of Pakistani background, preyed on young, mostly white children. Girls as young as 11, groomed to believe they were the girlfriend of the perpetrator, gang raped, trafficked for sex to other northern towns and cities. 1,400 victims at a conservative estimate. Today's report once again points to systematic mistakes on the part of the council. But the senior leadership involved during the period of investigation have moved on or resigned. Some of them retired with pensions. And the authors of today's report say they have no further recourse. A wasted opportunity, says Jane Senior, who has long campaigned on behalf of victims. I'm a little bit disappointed, actually. I think it's a missed opportunity. I mean you know, for the survivors, victims and families in Rotherham. They've waited 15, 20 years in some cases to get the answers to what went wrong in the past. And I'm shocked that nobody's been held accountable. Some have been held accountable. 21 of the perpetrators are now behind bars. Dozens of police officers are under investigation. And the council says it's a different organisation to what it was. But for Rotherham's hundreds of victims, this is nowhere near enough. Well, earlier I spoke to the new leader of Rotherham Council, Chris Reid. I began by asking him why no senior figures from Rotherham Council will face criminal charges. I'm as frustrated as anybody is that the reports today don't manage to pin culpability or criminal culpability on any current or former members of staff. But of course, it's incredibly frustrating to see uh, no one who was here at the time, no one held responsible in that way. 27 people refused to be questioned by the authors of the report, including senior council officers and the former leader. They're a disgrace, aren't they? 
they are absolutely for refusing to take part in that way. These are people who had the chance to come forward to tell their side of the story, to help to shed some light on what went wrong in Rotherham and give some solace to children and their families who were so badly let down. And they chose not to do so. I hope they can live with their consciences. But what about the fact that these people couldn't be compelled? That in effect these reports that have been done on behalf of your council offer nothing to these young women and girls? Well, I, I hope they don't offer nothing. I hope they do help to cast some light on the failings at the council. And I really do hope that survivors and their families can take some solace. In a sense, we know and have known for some time what the failings were. What these young women and girls and victims of the abuse were after was justice. And they're not going to get it, are they? Well, I think it's important to remember that there are ongoing criminal investigations. The National Crime Agency is undertaking the biggest ever inquiry into child sexual exploitation in Britain, looking at these uh, non-recent events in Rotherham. So I'm still hopeful that as part of that, um, people will see justice, including potentially uh, prosecutions of public servants where failings are found to be that severe. But one Unfortunately, these reports today were... Let me just finish about these reports today, if I can. These reports today were uh, commissioned by the council. They do depend on volunteers coming forward to take, uh, to take part in them, and we can't compel people to do so. But where is the value in those reports, then, if people, key people, refuse to give evidence? One of the victims stood up at the end of the meeting and said, what is the point in all the money that's been spent on this, these reports if no-one is brought to justice? And she's got a point, hasn't she? She does have a point, and I absolutely understand uh, the sentiment, and I share that sentiment. But let me put it another way to you. In the immediate aftermath of the Jay report, the then Chief Executive of the Council declared very quickly that no one could be held responsible for the failings revealed in that report. That wasn't an acceptable answer then, and it's not an acceptable answer to me now. My predecessor as leader therefore commissioned these reports, and therefore we have to let that work be done, we have to share that information, and I think we'd be facing a very different criticism if we hadn't done what we've done today. But do you accept, for many of the victims, these reports have been a waste of time and money? Well, I really hope they haven't been a waste of time and money, but of course I understand that people may feel like that. I hope they help to shed some more light on what went wrong in Rotherham. They do name individuals, they do name former members of senior staff. I think some of those people are going to come under a lot of pressure now. Um, but of course I understand people's frustration and I absolutely share it. And um, can you be sure that the errors of judgement, the missed opportunities that are peppered through these reports, that that era is genuinely over? Are you confident that grooming has now disappeared from your area? Well, let me answer that question in two parts. I'm very confident that the council today is a very different place to where it was four years or more ago. There are new people in place and they have been under enormous scrutiny. We've had uh, the biggest ever government intervention in Rotherham reporting back to government every three months for the last three years. Um, so I'm very confident that we've made big changes, big strides in the right direction, and our child protection is better. On the same part of your question, I'm afraid there will always be people who want to hurt children, not just in Rotherham, but elsewhere. We have a national epidemic of child abuse in our country. So we still face a, a threat from people who want to hurt children. What I can tell you is our services are better, we're helping to keep children safe better, and we're much more robust in coming after these vile criminals whenever we can.